by what used to be Fair Company Pond, where I used to come when I was about 14, 15 years old, with my dog Sparky that I adored, and I'd bring this book of poetry, which has survived about 35, 30, let's see, oh, about 35 years of being moved everywhere and hauled around in backpacks, boxes. I've always had the, kept kept this book because this is my favorite book of old 19th century stuff. Um, the best love poems of the American people. Okay, so since it's my birthday and in memory of that those times and since it is a gorgeous might I repeat gorgeous almost spring day Sarah and I came, and we're going to read some poems. Okay, and the first one is going to be this one. It's called Dried Apple Pies, Author Unknown. I loathe, abhor, detest, despise, abominate dried apple pies. I like good bread. I like good meat or anything that's fit to eat. But of all poor grub beneath the skies, the poorest is dried apple pies. Give me the tooth toothache, Sarah, or sore eyes. But don't give me dried apple pies. The farmer takes his gnarliest fruit Tis wormy, bitter, and hard, and tough to beat. No, it was hard and hard to beat. He leaves the hull to make us cough and don't take half the peelings off. Then on a dirty cord tis strung and in a garret window hung. And there it serves as roost for flies until it's made up into pies. Tread on my corns or tell me lies, but don't pass me dried apple pies. That's a good one. Okay, and here's a good one. The Child's First Grief. This is one of my favorites. This is by Felicia Hemans. Oh, call my brother back to me. I cannot play alone. The summer comes with flower and bee. Where's my brother gone? The flowers run wild. The flowers we sowed around our garden tree. Our vine is dropping with its load. Oh, call him back to me. He wouldn't hear thy voice, fair child. He may not come to thee. His face that once like summer smiled. On earth no more thou'lt see. A rose is brief, bright life of joy. Such unto him was given. Go, thou must play along, my boy. Thy brother is in heaven. And has he left his birds and flowers? And must I call in vain? And through the long, long summer hours... Will he not come again? And by the brook and in the glade are all our wanderings o'er. Oh, while my brother would have with me played, would I have loved him more. Oh, here's a great one, if I can find it, by Joyce Kilmer. Now, this is a good one, too, but I want to, let's see. If you but knew is a good one, if uh, the house with nobody in it. Oh, it's awesome. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, here's it. here it is. The house with nobody in it. I love this poem. This is a Joyce Kilmer poem. Okay. 
Whenever I walk to Suffern along the Erie track, I go by a poor old farmhouse with its shingles broken and black. I suppose I've passed it a hundred times, but I always stop for a minute and look at the house, the tragic house, the house with nobody in it. I never have seen a haunted house, but I hear there are such things, that they hold the talk of spirits, their mirth and sorrowings. I know this house isn't haunted, and I wish it were, I do. For it wouldn't be so lonely if it had a ghost or two. The house on the road to suffering needs a dozen panes of glass, and somebody ought to weed the walk and take a scythe to the grass. It needs new paint and shingles, and the vines should be trimmed and tied. But what it needs the most of all is some people living inside. If I had a lot of money and all my debts were paid, I'd put a gang of men to work with brush and saw and spade. I'd buy that place and fix it up the way it used to be, and I'd find some people who wanted a home, and I'd give it to them free. Now, house standing empty with staring window and door Looks idle, perhaps, and foolish, like a hat on its block in the store. But there's nothing mournful about it. It cannot be sad and alone for the lack of something within it that it has never known. But a house that has done what a house should do, a house that has sheltered life, that has put its loving wooden arms around a man and his wife, a house that has echoed a baby's laugh and held up its stumbling feet is the saddest sight when it's left alone that ever your eyes could meet. So whenever I go to suffering along the eerie track, I never go by the empty house without stopping and looking back. Yet it hurts me to look at the crumbling roof and the shutters falling apart. For I can't help thinking the poor old house is a house with a broken heart. Okay, I'm going to um, stop the video for a second and do one with just that poem on it. How about that? Where'd Sarah go? Sarah, don't go far!